Hi guys, this is C Sharp Tutorial Calculator created earlier. So let me show you guys how this works. We can reset, enter a value in there, there, or exit out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you guys straight into C Sharp Development Environment, and we we'll put one of these together. Let's do that now, guys. Hi guys, and welcome to C Sharp Tutorial of a multiplication timetable i'm going to start by clicking on new select c sharp windows forms application.net and click on next give your project name i'm going to call it cs times table there we go and that's the name right there cs timetable so i'm going to save that click on create and now our development environment is ready you can just drag the form down much okay go straight to the toolbox if you don't have your toolbox click on view and right there you should be able to see your toolbox okay double click on the on the button and that is the button right there now let's go back we need text box and a label we need a label we need a list box right here that's a label that's a list box just double click on the component and we also need a text box right here there all the component that I need is there that's the text box that is the list box and that's the label there we go just drag it that much bring it right down select all of the components and let's increase the fonts let's come in here. i'm going to make the fonts bold and i will make that maybe about 20. okay let's go for 22. there we go right there guys okay for the button let's adjust the button something like that we do come straight to the properties here let's pin it down go straight to the where we have the name double click on that btn times table and the text let's change the text to times table there i'm going to copy that same button bring it down and copy one more this is going to be known as exit and here i'm going to change the variable name up here i'm going to change that to btn exit this one in the middle, I'm going to change that to BTN reset. And the display name is going to be BT, it's going to be just reset. There, done. Okay, that's good. So this text box, let's change the name of that text box to TXT times table. This list box, we change that to L. T L T S times table and here this list box here the label I mean I'm just gonna enter a number okay that's good enough enter a number there and this there we go this way we enter your number to be multiplied now this text box i'm going to you see the align i'm going to get it centered yeah okay that's good so maybe just drag that much and let's double click on this time table button double click on that the first thing is let's declare a variable i'm going to say dim that's integer sorry that's this now visual basic so we just say integer q comma i there it's just two variable q and i so first of all i'm going to use a for loop for let's say i equals one comma i equals I less than and equals to 12 
and we then need to increment the i we say i plus plus there we go then come right down here enter your statement block the coil braces is known as statement block and right here we now want lst times table to display i so if i accept that and run the program now all we just see is 1 2 12 let's run it and you see what i'm talking about and when you click on this there yeah, 1 to 12 it displayed okay but we want to go we want it to be a multiplication timetable so what we then do here is enter the plus sign the plus sign will come concatenate bringing it together let's say multiply come out of there get it concatenated again and q so if i run it now oh let's see q has no q has not been assigned that's why we have an error there so we need to assign q so let's come down here and say q q that would be equals convert dot to string whatever we have inside the text box so this is meant to be a text box txc times table okay whatever you have on the text box is converted to an integer and stored in here so if we run it now click and run and there we go enter a value in there there okay but we want it to get multiplied so the other thing we're going to do is if you see if i run it and don't enter anything in there now we end up with an error because we didn't enter anything in there so that is why i'm going to say it's advisable we use what is known as try cash but first of all let's finish up this timetable first then i'll show you guys how to do that now i'm going to copy this just to finish up the timetable come right here paste change this one to equals and right here all i then need to do is you just need to say i multiply by q that's my timetable completed that's the lines of code for that let's do one more thing I just need to increase the font size so that you guys can see it a little bit much better come here just make that maybe about 16 that would do all right check that out that's your timetable lines of code so if i run it now enter whatever number in here let's say nine there we go check that out that's fine but as you saw earlier without entering anything there we end up with an error so let's prevent that error so we can prevent that error by using what is known as try cache supposing we want to enter our try cache in here try and enter your coily braces there so all of these lines of code i'm going to drag them straight into the middle of that coily braces okay but it's not finished yet right underneath here we now need to specify our cache statement as a cache okay you can then use exception if you want the exception or oh, there's an x missing there exception ex okay there so let's use a message box to display our error message message box dot show the following so this is the message that will show from the system now the next thing you want to do is we want txt timetable dot clear because you've entered an invalid data in there then we also want txt timetable dot focus okay there you can use this message as an inbuilt message or you can write your own message so first of all there it's telling me input string was not in the correct format because we didn't enter anything there and now we've entered something that's fine okay the next thing we can do is you can either enter your own comment in there and just comment this one out this is how you comment so which means it's going to be ignored
enter your own comment in there. Let's say maybe enter the correct value, something like that. The choice is yours if you want to do that. Okay, run. If I don't enter anything there, this pops up. Enter the correct value. Okay. Oh, just set to for the system built in message, which I will recommend you use. This one is more reliable. So do that again. Check that out. Input string was not in the correct format. So I'm going to set to for that. Now, one thing that is left for us to do is. I'm going to select all of these again. I want to just increase the font size just a little bit more. Uh, let's set to for maybe 28. Let's see what's going to happen. That's 28. Uh, let's drag this that much. Repeat the same thing here. There. Okay. Let's see. Now run enter something here there we go now one more thing is you see the form I want to get it centered make sure the form is selected you see come straight to the properties where you have start position change that to center screen okay once it's changed to center screen that's it so when you run your program it should be dead center okay so let's run that run Look at the form centered now. There, there we go. All right, one more thing or two more things to do double click on the reset button. Okay, that is the reset button. Just copy those lines of code, dump it right here. And the list box as well. We want to reset that. LST dot clear so that we can. I just want to clear with no clearing selection. Okay, let's say item dot clear dot items dot clear. There we go. There. So run. Enter a value in there. There. Select clear. Brilliant. Now, the next thing is let's take care of exits. So in there you can just say dialog result. So that's the dialog result. I'm going to use just enter my own variable in there. It's going to be I exit. I exit. That will be equals message. Message box dot show. I just say confirm if you want to exit. There we go. So that's my first argument. The second argument that's going to be comma. Then we enter second argument, maybe multiplication timetable in there. All right. So that's my second argument. delete all of this as the problem when you try to take a shortcut okay just get rid of this time table now the third argument comma the third argument is going to be message box buttons dot question or dot yes or no okay then the final argument is going to be message box icon I'm going to accept that that's my icon in there that's bring it down message box icon so first argument second argument third argument and the fourth argument now use an if statement if I exit equals dialog result dot yes we just enter application dot exit that is it okay what will happen is this will actually prompt you to confirm if you want to exit or not so let's run it run Size table reset. Would you like to exit? No. So if you don't want to exit, 
Reset. Would you like to exit? Yeah. And that's how you create your own timetable in C Sharp. So with that, guys, I'm call it the end of this tutorial. I suppose you guys enjoyed. And please do subscribe to this channel. And you can also join to become a member of the channel. You all have a nice day. And bye for now.